Greetings from the Philippines to the world. It's 5.15 here in Manila, and we are on eaglenewslive.com. I am Cesar Vallejos, and we are open for business. Join me discover the latest news and information and business around the world from vision to action. In this episode of Open for Business, let's understand why doing good is good for business. Some call it philanthropy, others call it corporate social responsibility, and a growing number of corporations use the term sustainability. With all the applications of practical, innovative, and sustainable approaches to benefit those who are marginalized, businessmen have also shifted to social entrepreneurship. Later this afternoon, we will be talking with a social entrepreneur who is not only recognized here in the Philippines, but has been awarded with his contributions in the larger society in many parts of the world. Before that, let's check this week's business news. Mani V. Pangilinan is Asia's Telco CEO of the Year. Filipinos' online spending to go up $122 billion in 2018. PLDT and Smart Communications CEO Manuel V. Pangilinan was named Telecom CEO of the Year at Telecom Asia Awards in Singapore. The Telecom Asia Awards is the region's longest-running industry awards program, which seeks to recognize the continent's premier service providers and telco executives. It is organized annually by Telecom Asia, the largest telecom publishing group in the region. Pangilinan won over Andrew Pock of HGC Global Communications, Bill Barney of Reliance Communications and Global Cloud Exchange, Chua Sukung of the Singtel Group, Tian Sisuarini of Excel Akshara, Ernest Ku of Globe Telecom, Vinod Kumar of Tata Communications, and Yang Ji of China Telecom. MVP said that he is very mindful that in this age of relentless disruption, each new day brings fresh changes. The award serves as a reminder to keep striving to reinvent businesses and improve the lives of people. Under Pangilinan's leadership, PLDT and SMART have committed historic levels of resources to support network transformation. This year, capital expenditures are expected to reach 58 billion pesos and will likely stay at that level over the next three years, bringing the group's total capital expenditure to nearly 260 billion pesos since, it's, since it embarked on its network and information technology transformation programs in 2016. SMART is also at the forefront of heralding 5G wireless broadband technologies and services in the country. PayPal and Ipsos reported that most Filipinos expect to increase their online spending this year. Results of the PayPal Cross Borders Consumer Research 2018 showed that the total online spend of Filipino shoppers is predicted to rise by 32% to $121.9 billion this year, from about $92.5 billion in 2017. The survey covered 34,000 in 31 countries with 1,000-plus participants in the Philippines. PayPal Strategic Director for Southeast Asia, Abhinav Kumar, said that 55% of those who are shopping online expect their online spending to increase. PayPal also said Filipinos are estimated to spend around 185.16 billion pesos in online shopping by 2020. Cross-border, which refers to international trade spent in the Philippines, is also expected to grow by 47% in 2018 from an estimated 41.5 billion spent in 2017. In terms of smartphone cross-border purchases, the Philippines ranked third out of surveyed Asia-Pacific countries, which are India, China, Japan, Hong Kong, Australia, and Singapore. Mobile commerce in the Philippines is also expected to jump this year with the growth of mobile use and adoption of new technologies. PayPal predicts an increase in Philippines' mobile commerce. This figure is likely to continue with the gr uh, growth with the proliferation of mobile devices and new mobile technologies that are emerging to create greater mobile commerce opportunities for Filipino consumers and merchants. Top reasons cited by Filipinos for increasing online spending are convenience, variety of platforms, and expectation of faster shipping. 
When Open for Business gets back, let's hear the insights of the CEOs from the chairman of Asia CEO Awards, Richard Mills. Stick with us. You're back on We Are Open for Business on EagleNewsLive.com. Uh, joining me this afternoon is Richard Mills, the man behind the Asia CEO Awards and e-commerce summit who will tell us uh, to discover the latest tech trends and possibilities across the entire e-commerce spectrum. Thank you for coming, Richard. Thank you for uh, okay. having me, Cesar. Okay, before we go into the details about e-commerce, and if you can comment on the news earlier, um, you've been uh, conducting a lot of events, and uh, what is the, mo what the most popular, of course, is the Asia CEO Awards, which is now on its ninth year. I'd, li I'd like to ask you, Richard, what are the insights now of the CEOs, especially that you are accepting nominations for the Asia CEO Awards? Okay, that's a big question, but yeah, there's a lot going on. I think the, the message that we're hearing is everybody is excited about the future of Philippines, mm -hmm. not only in Philippines, but across the world these days. So mm -hmm. it's a very exciting time, a special time for Filipinos. I know my, my Filipino friends sometimes, for such a happy uh, uh, people about... Uh, about smiling and all, all. they're a bit gloomy sometimes about themselves so okay. I think part of it we want to send the message out that this is a golden age we will look upon mm -hmm. in, in, in the future we will look back at this time as mm -hmm. a golden age for Philippine Philippines prosperity and the, the awards event is meant to highlight that and to promote Philippines to the world and it's a great story I noticed that uh, there's a, a, a growing participation of CEOs in the awards, uh, and I've seen that for the past four years. Is that an indication of the le uh, level of confidence that they're having in the business climate here in the Philippines? True. Yes, we get uh, huge numbers of, of uh, nominations these days. Uh, judges include people like Cesar Purissima, the former finance uh, and highly uh, finance uh, uh, secretary. Ambassador Joey Cusha, who's mm -hmm. the former head of the central bank, former U.S. Uh, ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie Villegas, um, uh, esteemed economist uh, and others. Um, so it's, it's, it's an exciting uh, group and a lot of interest certainly in highlighting lead, uh, the, the leaders and companies that are doing well in Philippines. And in the past, it was it was mainly Metro Manila where prosperity was going, mm -hmm. but now it's literally across the country. Cebu, Clark, Davao, you name it. It's such an exciting time, absolutely. With the uh, Asia CEO Awards, it means that you're also accepting nominations not only in Metro Manila, but nationwide. Absolutely, yes. And, and we do regular events now. Maybe I can tell you. I hope I'm not uh, okay, taking okay. a I'll go different ahead. direction. I'll go ahead. Because but, the, okay, my, my question please. is, what? Uh, because you conduct uh, events for the CEOs, so what specific industries are you focusing on and why? Well, there's so much going on. Now, you, you talked about e-commerce a, a, a short time ago, so we're mm -hmm. holding a, an e-commerce summit uh, next, uh, next month, so we'll have quite a few leaders um, Philippines mainly, but also from across Asia to, to uh, talk about this. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a, another big area where Philippines is going to prosper. Because, you know, in some countries mm -hmm. like China already, you mm -hmm. look like an antique if you walk <laughs> in and you pay with paper or even a, a credit card. Correct. If you don't pay by your phone, people are looking at you mm -hmm. and, you know, whispering yes. and, and so forth, right? So this is coming to Philippines. And oh, even financial alms. inclusion. Sorry, even alms. When you give yes. alms to the poor, it has to Absolutely. be using your mobile phone. Buying uh, funeral caskets. Buy, I mean, you name it. It's coming, right? Okay. And so, and so for financial inclusion, mm -hmm. this will be a monumental improvement for Philippines. Because, you know, people tell me that, uh, what is it, only less than 5% of people have um, 
credit cards and less than 20% have bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So this will dramatically improve the financial aptitude and, and inclusion of, of, of people. So, mm -hmm. you know, social enterprise is another aspect and e-commerce will make the biggest impact we will see in our lives coming in the next couple of years for this. So, mm -hmm. very exciting. Okay, uh, going back to the uh, insights of uh, uh, CEOs, uh, there's a lot of reports and reactions on, of course, the the condition of uh, the stock market and also the peso against the dollar. What is basically the general sentiment of uh, CEOs on this area? Well, the general sentiment is possible. Uh, possible. It's very, very positive. Okay. As a for instance, we've had people like Secretary um, Art Togade of Transportation mm -hmm. uh, speaking and got to know him. He spoke for us a, a, a couple of times, actually. Also, the mayor of, of Cebu, for instance, mm -hmm. Manny uh, Osmeña. Mm -hmm. um, so these people, you know, and I think Filipinos should be very proud of the quality of civil servants in particular in mm -hmm. senior positions that, that are mm -hmm. in place these days. Like Art is Art Tagade is one example of a guy who I think he's 72 or so. I think he's mm -hmm. as old as, as the mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. And like the president, just a workaholic, he, he has to drive from here all the way up to uh, Clark where he's often based doesn't get home till 10.30 at night. Can you mm -hmm. believe it? He actually gets into his vehicle in his pajamas many days <laughs> because he's going to finish dressing and, and so forth in the car on the way to, 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 to meetings. And mm -hmm. he's 72 years old. Now, so many of them are like that. And, and we have a, quite a number of them speak uh, mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're undersecretaries as mm -hmm. well. And I'm telling you, the changes that, are making, that, that, are, that, that they are putting in place not easy to do. They're doing dealing with tremendously difficult, you know, situations, but the impact it's having is tremendous. And I hope, you know, more and more Filipinos can can see this and experience it in their own lives, prosperity and, and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, you know, sometimes it looks like it's just the rich are getting richer, but I, I think <laughs> the data now is showing that no. That it's the middle class and the the poor people that that, that are that are bringing up. So it's it's very exciting times. Mm -hmm. Very exciting times. So there is a, a new law which was uh, signed. It's okay. uh, uh, the ease of doing business, uh, and yes. uh, I think that was uh, one of the greatest news um, uh, last week or two weeks ago because. Uh, it will somehow lessen the long queue in getting permits, uh, business permits, for example. So I'd like to get your action on this, especially you're an expat and you have worked with a lot of ex, you are working with a lot of expats here in the Philippines, especially with the many CEOs of uh, the BPOs in the country that you deal with. So how hard or how easy is it to do business in the Philippines? <laughs> Well, the right answer to that is it depends. Okay. You know, and it depends on what return. Okay. On many things. Okay. I mean, if you have got an, an area where there's there's a really progressive mayor in place and, and civil servants, mm -hmm. then things are going to go easy and fast and and uh, you know transparent. Other areas still where there's you know work to be done in, in that area. The federal government is showing fantastic leadership mm -hmm. in promoting and pushing in a in a hard manner mm -hmm. you know transparency and ease of doing business all mm -hmm. these kinds of things so you know again tremendous I improvements there. there there's one uh, some people are worried about this new train too okay, which correct. we can discuss but but overall it's it's a fantastic story again and, and improve if you look at where we've gone from Pinoy mm -hmm. to now, mm -hmm. or or to say two years ago when when um, Duterte first came in, mm -hmm. um, it's it's night and day, mm -hmm. it's night and day from where Philippines was, mm -hmm. absolutely, expats from every country I can think of telling me the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we also uh, are looking at. Uh, Philippine competitiveness. Again, in some reports and studies that was released, uh, I think this is very fresh. Also, this came out a, a week or a couple of weeks ago about 
Philippine competitiveness going down. Again, because you deal with a lot of CEOs in the events that you establish and uh, you um, come up with. Uh, how do you feel and what do you think is this um, competitiveness of the Philippines against the Asian con uh, neighbors or against the world? So uh, an area of uh, competitiveness, of course, would be the IT sector. But um, do you feel that uh, lessening um, uh, competitiveness? Is it... Uh, is it improving? Because, um, of course, we see that the BPO is one of the greatest contributors uh, in the economy. What's your insights on that? Okay, that's a, that's a big question because <laughs> there's many different industries. In, in, exactly, so, yes. Um, but, yeah, on, on the BPO side, I mean, it's, it's a good story in many ways because salaries have been increasing for, mm -hmm. for Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, though, it does make it, you know, we have to worry we don't get too expensive mm -hmm. and start to lose business. One concern, I, I can say, I mean, the, the great work that Dominguez is doing uh, in, in finance and, and, yes. and the general government is doing is, is fantastic, the work that they're doing. All the reforms and everything. Mm -hmm. Some people have called us about Train 2 and said, you know, Philippines is already kind of expensive. If Train 2 goes in all in one shot, mm -hmm. it might make it a bit too expensive and some work will go. As a for instance, mm -hmm. we do regular events in, in Clark and they're standing room only things because there's so much going on in Clark. Says okay. our, I don't yeah. know if you've been up, but anybody yes. watching that, you, you want to see progress in Philippines, go up to Clark and you will be astounded at what they're doing up there. Mm -hmm. But a group has called us of manufacturers mm -hmm. and said they want, they're very concerned about train two mm -hmm. because their head offices, whether they're Filipino companies or international companies, are telling them if that goes through, mm -hmm. the cost structure is going to increase too much too fast. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, like, there's one, a, a very big manufacturer, 20,000, 25,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, who said that they may have that they will be ha that their clients will force them to move work to China mm -hmm. because the cost structure just won't make uh, sense. L like already mm -hmm. in, in BPO, Philippines is uh, 10 15 percent more expensive than India, for instance. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's okay for now because you know why? Mm -hmm. Because why? people love Filipinos to deal with, right? <laughs> exactly. So they love it. So they say, okay, that's okay. 10-15% will pay it because we love Filipinos, they're talking to them, they're smiling, they're nice, all that kind of stuff now. Mm -hmm. But with Train 2, that's going to increase to 20-25%. Mm -hmm. And then at that stage, that's when it gets worrisome where, mm -hmm. okay, I like Filipinos, but this is a big cost differential. Mm -hmm. My head off, my boss tells me mm -hmm. we have to move some of this work. Mm -hmm. So that's the worry. So I don't. We don't want the great work that the government is doing. Dominguez, especially. I mean, he's really putting his his career on, on the line to really make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And we, we just don't want all that work to to be. Um, you know, because the government will lose support if mm -hmm. if, if employment levels go, go down. So what I mm -hmm. would like to have happen is train two to be phased in over a period of mm -hmm. years. That's what I would. Mm -hmm. recommend it and that's only mm -hmm. just I'm not an expert in these things Cesar but this is mm -hmm. what people have, have told me and this is what because everybody wants to support the great work the government is doing mm -hmm. let's make that clear but just we we want it to be sustainable if they go too far too fast you know we, we might lose jobs and Filipinos are not going to be happy okay. who can blame them you said that uh, the BPO, for example, is already more expensive by 10 to 15 percent. Now with train 2, it may increase to 20 to 25. That's just for BPO. It doesn't cover other industries. Well, manufacturing is, is the oh. other one that has okay. come to us. So they want to, us to do a, an event in mm -hmm. Clark just focused on the um, train 2 issue. Okay. One will be the, the head of the... Uh, the, lo the uh, Clark Locators Asso Investors okay. and Locators and, Association okay. uh, and a couple of other senior manufacturers from the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's how big a th concern is. We never got these kinds of calls before, but mm -hmm. anyway. So uh, your recommendation is to face it, is to make, uh, is to somehow face it in a, ser in a certain number of years. Is that the common sentiment? 
uh, have you uh, have you well, spoken with the other uh, CEOs? And what's your next step? Uh, do you plan to come up with a recommendation, a formal recommendation to to the Philippine government? That's, and we have different people asking us to put together materials to, that we could prevent. Uh, present so I don't know whether I should do, I think others should do that not us but mm -hmm. we want to support the, these issues if this is a real issue and there's a groups of people who have credible you know uh, claims and that we want to present that you know mm -hmm. so we want to help the government you know as much as we can aside from the issue on train too what are the other uh, issues of CEOs that you think must be fixed so that uh, they will have a better, more uh, competitive contribution in the Philippine economy. Well, I would say in other, virtually, I don't know, this sounds like a bit, I don't mean it to sound too nice or, or whatever, because I know it, in media you want to get the headlines and <laughs> all that stuff. But the, the story is, is a good story, Cesar. Okay. The work that you know, all of the different agencies are doing is moving the country ahead, and, and they are making improvements. So it's all a good story. I think the only issues, if you call it, are things like, um, can we can we develop and keep the staff we need, the mm -hmm. senior trained staff that are needed to move the big construction uh, projects ahead, tourism, mm -hmm. which is another big area now that's really set for a, a big, big, exciting thing. And, and the problem is, in those people is, Richard, you know, I, I spend six months um, paying f to, to develop these people, you know, train them and so forth. Then I spend another six months getting them, you know, work experience on the site. And then they get a better offer to go to Singapore or someplace like that, and they're gone, and they have to start all over again. So these, guys, but these are issues because the economy is growing strong, and there's mm -hmm. opportunities, and people recognize the quality of Filipino, uh, um, you know, workers and, and professionals, right? So, so it's all a good story, but just these kinds of growing pains are are, are the concern, I think. So you think that uh, there is not enough Filipino talent? Or maybe once they are, uh, they are trained here, and if there are opportunities, they go to the neighboring countries or even to other countries far from the Philippines. What do you think is it that would make the Filipino talent stay? Well, it's kind of simple, but kind of basic. And what we need to do is not only make them stay, that's a very important thing, true, but also bring them back is the other thing. And so what's going to happen, and, it, and is happening, is salary levels are increasing. They're already happening. Um, and this is what's going to make them go. Because if, if you can, you know, if you're going to earn two or three times in Singapore, which you can here, you know, a young person in particular would would do that not because a young person may not know that okay you're going to earn ten, two or three times more but you're going to pay in costs mm -hmm. and hassles mm -hmm. and be away from your family mm -hmm. two or three times more than what you're paying here too right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well you may not get the kind of experience i, I think here too mm -hmm. um here uh, you know a filipino can can ride up the the opportunities mm -hmm. that are in front of all of us mm -hmm. and uh, really grow their career. In Singapore, my understanding is they keep you at a at a middle level or even a lower mm -hmm. middle level so you don't get that senior experience. Mm -hmm. um, so these kinds of things um, I think is going to make people stay and come back. You've and we need them. Okay. You've been working with a lot of Filipinos. Uh, what is it with the Filipino talent? Why did you decide to stay here in the Philippines and uh, work and nourish, help nourish the uh, CEOs in the Philippines? As a matter of fact, you're celebrating the success sure. of CEOs every year. And I've seen, I've attended this uh, uh, CEO yep. awards every Glad year, and it's growing, and um, you... Uh, celebrate their successes. What is it in the Filipino talent that made you stay? And what do you think is the future of the CEOs working here in the Philippines? Well, like I said, it's, it's a positive story. And so when I, when I first came years ago, this was, what, 16 or so years ago. 
So it was just after the Asian crisis, remember that? Mm -hmm. And just after Filipinos had kicked out that uh, President um, Estrada, mm -hmm. uh, who, who didn't, they didn't like it for a while or something. But he's <laughs> okay. doing good now as a mayor. Okay. Uh, right. but, the, um, but yeah, so it, it, it was a very uh, desperate time economically. The, the economy mm -hmm. really, uh, really was scraping the, the bottom in those days. But I could see... And, and what happened, I'll tell you what, what happened is, it was the early days of the call center industry when mm -hmm. call center managers were coming from the U.S. and some other uh, uh, countries, Canada and Britain and so forth. And every one of them, when I would mm -hmm. talk to them, they would tell me, Richard, this is the best opportunity I've ever seen. I'm mm -hmm. working with people, Filipinos, who love, who I love, and they love me, and, and the quality of, of the work that they do, and, and the, the enthusiasm and commitment they have, Richard. And I was in, you know, office after, guys almost in tears crying mm -hmm. because of what it meant to their lives too, right? Yes. Like in those days, you couldn't get people, you know, to, to come. It was hard to get people to come to Philippines. You could get the, you know, the lower middle level guys from Wyoming or New Brunswick or some, you know, place in the middle of nowhere, right? But then very soon, because of the success and commitment of their Filipino staff, they would get pushed up in their own careers. And I can tell you, they appreciated mm -hmm. tremendously. And they all became strong supporters of Filipinos and, and Philippines. And so as a result, pretty soon, you know, a, a couple of years after be here, being here, they go from a bottom low to... CEO, they're Correct. talking to the CEO of, of the global company, telling them, you know, like a real key senior management, you know, so I, I can tell you the impact that it made on, on them and on me hearing story after story all, all day long says, wow, something is going to happen in Philippines. This is going to be a country of the future. And look, it's happening right before our eyes. So it's a great story, Cesar. Pleased to be here. Uh, on that note, I have a lot of questions, and I think you have to come back here in Open oh. Business <laughs> and talk more about sure. those exciting stories with sure. the CEOs, with the Filipinos that you love. True. I'll exactly. give you a little time to, of course, invite uh, our friends, our viewers around the world to nominate for the ACC Awards and your other events. Well, yeah, it's true. Hopefully, you can come to our events and all that kind of stuff. Get on our, our, our website. It's just asia-ceo.org and sign up for our subscription so you get our invitations and so forth. But we got to make this message to young Filipinos. And this is all of our responsibility because when we see these, these uh, surveys where, where young Filipinos, many of them after they graduate, they think of their, their, their great success or, or, uh, um, is, is to move out of Philippines. God, I can't believe it. Right? It's crazy. So we've got to get this, this good news story down to Filipino, y young Filipinos, mm -hmm. right? I think, you know, the older ones, I think we're getting the message, right? But the younger Filipinos, this is what the message that we have to give to, to really make them proud and, and, and not, well, proud, yes, but just to see the opportunities right in front of us growing up everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And we need people be here and, and committed. So anyway, so that's all. So thank you very much. When, oh, thank you, Richard. When Open Four Business returns, we will be talking to the man who literally lighted the homes and neighborhoods in communities that has no access to electricity using a plastic bottle. We will be hearing it straight from the founder and leader of Light Executive Director, Mr. Ilak Angelo Diaz. We'll be back.
We are open for business here on EagleNewsLive.com. According to the Swab Foundation, a social entrepreneur is a leader or pragmatic visionary who achieves a large-scale, systemic, and sustainable social change through a new invention or innovates by finding a new product, service, or a new approach to a social problem. Well, the person beside me, according to sources, has already helped 382,000 Filipinos and 690,000 people throughout the world to get out of energy poverty. Litter of Lights, Ila Angelo Diaz. Welcome Hello. to Thank Open Thank you. Purpose. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you a few questions. What is your concept of social entrepreneurship? I think social entrepreneurship is a, a broader sense of leadership uh, than business. Sometimes, you know, uh, business has always been taught to us in school, like, you know, invest the minimum and take out the maximum. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, they don't tell you that sometimes uh, you have to think about the larger definition, which is, what about your employees? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be? Are they well? Are they earning well? Okay. Uh, are, how about beyond the borders of your of your of your factory? Or how society? How, mm -hmm. how are they doing? Mm -hmm. And and the biggest one really is uh, what about the environment? Mm -hmm. uh, is it something that your the impact of your your operations is going to damage the environment for hundreds of years to come? So I'll, I'll cut you there, uh, Ila. What is the difference with between a business entrepreneur? from a social entrepreneur? Well, the, the getting there, that means that a social entrepreneur uses the power of business for social good. Mm -hmm. Equity mm -hmm. is not yours or uh, owned by uh, you know the investors, okay. but the investors is society. So let's say mm -hmm. uh, you put up a business where uh, part of your, your work is uh, teaching women like rags to riches, creating a, a, you know, used over rugs, mm -hmm. uh, tela, no? and, and, mm -hmm. and weaving it into mats and high-class bags. But mm -hmm. that money goes back to the women mm -hmm. uh, so that they earn you know, uh, uh, better. They, they, they're able to earn enough to feed their children, uh, more than 10,000 pesos per month, mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, uh, where they also get to expand, uh, in fact, without you. So... Uh, Litter of Light is, is, is that uh, we were trying to solve energy poverty mm -hmm. without having to import solar lights from mm -hmm. abroad, okay. which costs 60 to 80 percent uh, sometimes wow. of, the, of, 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 the, of, of the funds. Mm -hmm. So the, as, as a social entrepreneur, did you really plan it? How did you start? What was, uh, did you think of, okay, one day you thought that, okay, I'm going to be a social entrepreneur? Oh well, what was your story? You you start out doing good uh, with a very uh, you know uh, philanthropy thought, which is mm -hmm. if I had a certain amount of money, I, I can use this money for for good. Mm -hmm. But then you use a cash burn system that was mm -hmm. very painful for us. We raise funds for six months mm -hmm. and then we burn it. Uh, so one minus one is always zero. You're always starting from the base, mm -hmm. whereby. An entrepreneurship uh, uh, attack or an approach, uh, uh, an entrepreneurship approach. You use the capital. You work with the community. The community earns, but you get to sell the goods, and the money goes back uh, into your uh, foundation. Once again, the equity is not. I get a salary, mm -hmm. but the equity is not mine. Okay. Uh, this is the communities to be able to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. uh, and you know they are part of the creative process. They are part of the energy, and so that's why I call it a social entrepreneurship. It's mm -hmm. it's it's using society, the people that need it, mm -hmm. uh, to be the ones that are the the main uh, energy themselves to be able to provide the solution, but also to expand you know mm -hmm. to expand their help towards others. And and I can uh, display this a little bit more. In, in my journey. Mm -hmm. So some of the questions is that, is it, uh, with social entrepreneurship, could it be more, both pro for profit and not for profit? Well, that's what I was saying. If uh, the, 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 the activity okay. has a profit, okay. the equity or the ownership of those profits mm -hmm. is not, it's, it's not, uh, as I said, it's not the, it, it is, a, it's, it has that shared community. So it's a little bit of cooperative, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, it takes it a little, a little bit more than, than just sharing the profits. Mm -hmm. And what is that special invention or if uh, a special product that, or, or a solution that you have? Done and that you have shared it uh, with the world. We've been seeing a lot of your videos and a lot of write-ups about uh, Litter of Light. With 
here is a lamp and what's the concept behind it how did you discover or how did you enhance an existing idea uh, you know let's let's start basically okay. uh, with uh, uh, solutions to housing mm -hmm. uh, what what we did many years before as, okay. you know my startup was realizing that it was not uh, you know it was not just seeing people that are running the economy the OFW staying in the streets especially in the shipping industry okay. whereby we opened up a dormitory okay. uh, for 2,000 seafarers where they could pay us only for 50 pesos uh, a night mm -hmm. and uh, from there uh, if they did not uh, if they did not have the money uh, they could work it off they can perform service uh, certain services uh, mm -hmm. in in the in the, the dormitory if they brought in people they earned a certain kind of living so mm -hmm. it's that kind of energy whereby you're using communities to be able to work with you to keep mm -hmm. a social you know a social good up uh, when we started uh, working with schools we were saying why are we bringing almost 90 percent of the materials from the shore to the islands why mm -hmm. not build locally why not okay. use the local materials use the local people right. and one of the things about building in schools no bamboo schools certain schools plastic mm -hmm. bottle schools where people source it, build it, and then they earn from the construction of it rather than some outside contractor. Mm -hmm. you know? right. uh, the fact that we were trying to get mothers uh, to be able to bring their kids to school. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we said is, why don't you build the solar light uh, for your, your child? Mm -hmm. And then later on, when they were working, they would come, bring their child to school, and we would pay them to make solar lights, which uh, first we sold, right? Mm -hmm. But then we realized that there was an even bigger opportunity uh, that was out of just us. We, we said, why don't you just rent the solar lights? Why don't you take 20 of these, mm -hmm. bring it to your, your Sari Sari store, and start renting it uh, to the people outside? You keep, you keep the solar panel, mm -hmm. and then every time it's discharged, they come back to you. They pay 10 pesos, and then you charge it for two hours, and then you, you, you get to do it. So uh, how about taking kerosene lamps? That are there's 13 million kerosene lamps out there. Mm -hmm. Why don't you charge them for converting kerosene lamps into solar? Mm -hmm. How about street lights? How can you uh, talk to people in the street and say, look, if you pay me a hundred pesos a week, I will maintain the street light over there. So this was a very interesting way. Instead of giving a, 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 a imported, patented, and expensive solar light, mm -hmm. let's say from China or India, which are designed to break mm -hmm. in like a year batteries. and a half. Well, mm. it's designed to break. Okay. It, it, first of all, it's micro circuits. So the micro circuits, you can't repair it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're actually made out of parts that you can find from your local tindahan, electronic tindahan. Okay. Uh, you could actually build a whole industry based on uh, teaching women cooperatives to be able to do it. So Litter of Light expanded that way. And then later on, people started asking us from remote areas mm -hmm. and saying, we said, well, where, where's your husband? And they said, What's, we're a co women cooperative. What do you mean our husband? Well, he brings vegetables and fish to the wet market in Manila. Mm -hmm. okay. They come back with empty crates. I'll tell you what, we loan you okay. 10, 50, 100 uh, s uh, parts. No, okay. You build it. When you, you say build, they assemble it. Assemble it. Because okay. if you don't assemble it there, if mm -hmm. something happens and breaks, okay. there's no way for them to come back to Manila. Right. Why not repair it since it's so simple? Mm -hmm. So we would create this kind of loaning of materials. When it gets there, they build it. And then uh, 60, 90, 120 days, they pay us mm -hmm. back. 90% repayment rate. We don't have to pay the logistics anymore. Women know how to repair it. But there was something really fantastic that comes out of social enterprise. And this is, remember, the equity stays with the community, right? Correct. The equity Correct. is not like they pay for imported lights. It mm -hmm. goes to a dealer in Manila and then goes abroad. Yes. So you see how business Correct. sometimes depletes what is mm -hmm. called cash flow from the community, whereby social enterprise increases cash flow. Mm -hmm. It's because once you have money, then the women were making decisions, whereby mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. need we need to have doctors here mm. to take care and of children. And the money stays in that community. Yes, so it mm. becomes a richer community. Okay. So equity, the equity is being used now for doctors. If they want to bring books, they now can use, uh, they can now buy books. And so women, women cooperatives, and, mm -hmm. and this just, you know, my knowledge of working with women cooperatives, they invest in society. They invest mm -hmm. in, their, in, in their village rather than going always into debt because it's a, it's a, it's a product that always breaks. Mm-hmm that is designed to break, people are going more and more into that 
as you're trying to access energy. So bottom-up approach was something that enriches the community and enriches the health, enriches the knowledge. And uh, you'll see later on that the streetlights, we're now putting repeaters onto it because now we've come mm -hmm. up with a special program where uh, you could communicate in the whole village called mm -hmm. Local Area Network using old mobile phones to WhatsApp with each other. Oh, it's like okay. a WhatsApp, okay. but only for inside the community. So they can talk, they can download information. There's a central library, okay. and it's all things that you can get off the shelf. So the vision really was light, enlightenment. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, you talked about street lighting. Yes. Of course, uh, in the Philippines, we only, uh, there are off-grid areas that has no access to electricity. But one event that uh, happened here, of course, especially in Mindanao, was the Marawi siege. Yes. And uh, can you give us an introduction of this before we show the video? Well, okay. this, this was a basic, uh, you know, there's, there's, the Philippines has challenges. Okay. And this is both nature and, you, you know, human cost. Okay. Nature in Tacloban, where, you know, uh, we could not take five months for imported solar lights to get to Tacloban. So, okay. the t same technology, we use the women over there, paperwork, to be able to light up 7,000 houses. Okay. And now, uh, many years later, we have the human tragedy uh, of, uh, of of Tacloban, where 700,000 people have been displaced mm -hmm. in a totally damaged city. I mean, I've traveled, uh, you know, I, I bring, uh, I think I, a lot of the lights in Yemen, mm -hmm. solar lights, were actually Im implemented by Liter of Light. Wow. Uh, so uh, this was the same thing. I said, look, I do it in Ethiopia, I do it in Pakistan. Now I want to do it for Marawi. And so working with uh, working with the local communities mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, as a lot of them women cooperatives they're all building the solar lights by hand and they're now lighting the center of marawi it's just the, the power you know how they call the women uh ilaw ng tahanan okay yes i always call them the ilaw ng bayan wow so wow. this is the story of marawi of how we work together with women uh, entrepreneurs to start lighting up refuge, the refugee areas mm -hmm. so that they're, they're safer. Crime is down 70%. And now we're starting to light the first ones to light the center of Marawi. Mm -hmm. uh, we were given uh, you know, help with the Department of Energy, the military to fly there. Uh, Pepsi is one of our, our donors. And of course, uh, one of the prizes is this Zayed Future Energy Prize, mm -hmm. where we're now gonna build uh, centers where women cooperatives can now mm -hmm. not receive, but start building solar lights to be able to light up uh, those areas. Especially because now La Sureco and, and those areas have lost the consumer base in the center. So there's, you know, fluctuating brownouts uh, that uh, these camps uh, can now have uh, a steady uh, form of clean, you know, uh, uh, safe uh, and non-toxic energy. With the with the Marawi streets, you said you have lighted uh, that part. Uh, are you given a specific area, uh, or it's uh, it was the government who selected those areas? Actually, the Department of Energy uh, selected okay. it because uh, you know uh, Marawi, in a in a in a very strange sense, uh, there was an approaching Earth R, and Marawi was deemed as one of the darkest places on Earth. Okay. Can yes. you imagine a, a modern city now called the darkest place on earth, on earth are? So I said, why not, uh, you know, why not work together to light up Marawi? Mm -hmm. uh, what will it take to light up the center of Marawi to give a, a vein of, of, of new energy, of new life in, in a city that, that, you know, has this been destroyed? And so if you play the video a little bit, uh, you will see how uh, with, mm -hmm. with simple technology uh, and, you know, as I said, uh, La Sureco, wonderful. You know, they were the, the people that still stuck around, the, mm -hmm. the linesmen that are now rebuilding, are the first ones to go into the center to just bring lights to the main street. So uh, it's a very inspirational. Mm -hmm. And and I just wanted to say, the last the last person out of Marawi, uh, besides the combatants, was a, a, a woman. Uh, you know, her name is uh, the general manager. Her name is Lik Lik. Okay. And she was the last one to keep the power on in Marawi uh, okay. b before, you know, before it, uh, no, before, uh, before, of course, things got out of hand. And mm -hmm. so she evacuated. But the last woman holding the power on in 
in Marawi was was uh, uh, mislikli. How how simple is it to build it? Like for example, of course Marawi is just one of the uh, war torn areas that can uh, where you can help. But now, uh, how easy is it to assemble and to put this up? Well, you know, we in terms of your resources, are you? Is there a lot of people that are involved, or it's just the simple? Technology and then you pass it on to the community. Well, well, being part of the solar revolution, there's two ways. Either okay. you go into debt to be able to buy it, or go into five six, or, or you know, or or uh, <coughs> or microfinance, which is also very. Or you can create uh, people that are empowered mm -hmm. to be able to assist. So we we access schools. Mm -hmm. We go to schools in in thirty minutes. We can make a kid build from a dirty kerosene to solar in 30 minutes. We go to corporates. Uh, we go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, anyone, anyone mm -hmm. can be a solar engineer. It's just the fact that this kind of technology is not widely displayed and widely accessed. Uh, so uh, we're, we believe that uh, so solar revolution mm -hmm. should be a top down, you know, it should be a power of the people, the power to know what it is, the power to access the parts from, from you know, from uh, from local parts, uh, and also the, the power to transform women cooperatives from just making you know like indigenous weave and pottery into uh, one of the energy pioneers. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very exciting. Before we go into a break, can you also uh, describe your journey? I'm sure this idea, you know, is not simple. You there was a journey that you followed. So can you describe uh, that kind of journey? Was it easy? Was it hard? Was it? Uh, were you able to? Uh, what? What? Where was the? When and where was that break? When you hit that break, and then you said, "This is it," and it finally exploded. I think uh, people invest more in uh, what is called, like you know, solar farms and. But a lot of the people that really need it, they're passed upon. So let's say you had the hydro, hydro plant here, but your lines go over poor communities and go to the central city, let's say Baguio. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, the, the, what, what really drove the point mm -hmm. was uh, during the time of, uh, you know, uh, Haiyan, yeah. where really uh, 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 lights were not coming for mm -hmm. months. And so really we were able to, to, to show how we could scale such mm -hmm. a knowledge. We also have uh, uh, this expansion. So we put up this video mm -hmm. of Yai Hayan and it hit 60 million views. Wow. We had John Kerry, who was one of those people that first recognized it, and we were recognized right there as Fulbrighters, uh, right, on the, right, right on the field. Like he made a whole sp a speech mm -hmm. on Litter of Light. Wow. So it, it gave us you know, that, that start. But today we're in about 20 countries around the world. I have mm -hmm. a, about 1,700 active members. Mm -hmm. About 10 of that is paid. Uh, we hit about, uh, we're hitting more than a million lights, I think mm -hmm. since last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're all maintained. Uh, in July, I'm going to be going to the middle of the Amazon. So this is my second mm -hmm. trip mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil. We're going to the middle of the Amazon, uh, deeper. So we went two weeks. Uh, and there's there's really piranhas and there's really okay. you know let's talk about Brazil when we get back. Uh, this uh, you're still watching Open for Business. Stick with us.
We're on Open for Business and you're watching here at eaglenewslive.com. I'm Cesar Valleos and with me is Ilak Diaz, the uh, Executive Director of Litter of Light. Before we proceed with the discussion, let's watch this video. The next one is the world record, no? The, okay, the yeah. world record. Correct. That looked very <laughs> easy and uh, and exciting. But you know what what is really interesting is that you mentioned earlier about Yemen, about Africa, Marawi, and they're also in Brazil. Can you talk more about the countries where you you were at? So yeah, we're very strong in Malaysia. Uh, we have about 700 strong. Mm -hmm. uh, almost the same also in Brazil. We have Colombia, we have uh, Peru, uh, we have Chile, uh, we have Mexico, we have Kenya, uh, we have India, we have Nepal. So uh, simple technologies. Of, this, of the countries that you mentioned, what is it that has the greatest impact? Something that you really remember wherever you are? Uh, we have uh, energy poverty, the need, mm -hmm. but also we have a youth that wants to get involved. Okay. They are tired of like just rock concerts and, <laughs> you know, come and then, you know, afterwards you can change the world. Okay. And then of course, okay, how do we change the world? No. Change is up to you, you know. <laughs> so, so, so they're starting to realize that uh, a lot of it is promotion. It's you know, it's it it it's you know, uh, uh, getting names, getting emails. But a lot of young people are getting frustrated. It's like, yes, you know, we we're we're energized. What do we do? But because a lot of the marketing people are not actually uh, in the social work, okay, they don't yes. know how to organize people for uh, for social good. Mm -hmm. So what we really are excited about is when we can organize around the technology. Uh, you know, I have a team right now going into Honduras. I have a team right now going into Haiti. I mean, we have the president of Haiti holding it. We, ha we, have, we just got an award by the Queen of England for wow. our work in Bangladesh. Uh, we, as I said, you know, Zayed Future Energy Pride, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Al Maktoum and Sheikh Al Nayan mm -hmm. uh, awarded our, our foundation. And also, also the most exciting one is we're one of thousands, you know, we're, uh, sorry, we're, we're less than 60 in the world being chosen uh, for, you know, the, the, the capacity to do change that have been chosen to be the first tenants of Expo 2020. And that's 30 million people to make an impression. So we're now on our journey to say, yes, we're from the Philippines, but because yes. we live in so much poverty, so much energy poverty, uh, we can do stuff. We can use our people power. We can use our skills, our innovation to transform it and share this with other southern communities. So this is not north-south. No, this is not mm -hmm. west, you know, west uh, U.S. And, and Europe. This is south people living in poverty, inventing things that work. Mm -hmm. uh, in our in our society and transferring it across the equator and across places where the same kind of energy poverty exists. That is very interesting in the sense that here is a, a, a Filipino uh, sharing the technology in many parts of the country. But uh, I just have to go back a little. Of course, you had that MIT Harvard backing. How? What 
is what is it that MIT and Harvard gave you or uh, how did it mold you or how did it enhance that technology to make te that technology work? Well, you know, uh, as I said, you know, uh, one thing that really started me up was really being in, you know, uh, Ondoy and Tacloban and and also just being so frustrated at the way that, you know, the, the Filipinos were perceived, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I even ask, is there a makeup artist for Lamok or Langaw that they put <laughs> the lang Langaw on the faces of Filipinos and make them look so terrible. And I said, look, I, I go all around, I go around the country, I see the Filipinos as one of the most hygienic. They mm, take about yes. three times a day. <laughs> Where do you find these young people that are completely, you know, desperate? Uh, and I and, and I asked them and they said, well, you know what? We don't get money by making you guys making them look healthy and <laughs> energized. And, and I said, you know what? We don't want to be marketed as the world's greatest uh, beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. We I I want to create a movement mm -hmm, sure. whereby even in a simple way and and hopefully uh, that you know that of course following others that we can become global benefactors that. Filipinos right. can be understood. Mm -hmm. We're not just, you know, we're not just great as at, uh, ano, at, uh, you know, malasakit of helping other people, but we're also malasakit in technology. We can, exactly. we can help others yes. get out of poverty. And I wanted to create a, a global case study uh, that we're equal and then that we're doing good in the world, and that you know we're not, you know, one of the greatest recipients for bilateral relations, donations, and handouts. But also that we're giving back to the world. So mm -hmm. that was why, you know, I entered MIT to learn about technology for what is called appropriate technologies, and I went to Harvard to be able to find out, like, how to expand that kind of knowledge. What's the policy? But really, my aim was: can we create case studies where Filipinos, with actual numbers, are doing global change? And mm -hmm. that way, can, can day, we? Absolutely. That's why okay. you know. That's why I dedicated you know a, a part of my life to this is 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 to organize you know what is going to be now crossing two thousand members around the world for mm -hmm. the for for the one technology or the one concept where we could make a change. So uh, right now we're you know as I said I just came back from Kenya. Uh, we we were in the Maasai tribes. Uh, I came back from you know I came back from from uh, from Bangalore. Came back from so. This is this, and then I'm going back. So what I'm saying is, you know, uh, the capacity to do good mm -hmm. is something that I want to inspire Filipinos. That you have ideas that can change the world, and you can you can actually get it out there. Hindi lang yung parang hey, you'll change the world, rah rah rah. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> there are stories of Filipinos out there, Tony Meloto uh, mm -hmm. and others, and, and it shouldn't just Nato be uh, it shouldn't be just few mm -hmm. in the social enterprise. That we can do global good. Mm -hmm. That was that's the only you know. If any, at the end of this whole story, if they can come up and say, "Oi, kung kaya nyan, they were just using a plastic bottle. Ano pa ako ang mas mm -hmm. magandang invento mm -hmm. ko? Well and good, outdo us. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is we broke the glass ceiling that we can also be global do-gooders. But what is your process? So how do you do that? How do you do it? What's your process in impacting and uh, sharing your story to the different countries and governments? Do you seek the help of the government or is it a direct uh, communication with the enterprise? So what's amazing in, in, in you know, I don't want to call my generation as I <laughs> millennial. Okay. I'm a millennium. millennium. Okay. Okay. But the fact that... Uh, Right now, we could mm -hmm. reach so many people by exactly what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. You're using Facebook, social media, mm -hmm. YouTube, okay. teaching people how to do it, exchanging. We could have not done this many years ago, but today we can reach thousands of people to mm -hmm. emulate and replicate what we're doing using local parts, using local skills mm -hmm. uh, with the internet. This is change making 2.0. Mm -hmm. This is where, you know, this is not going village by village by village, barangay by barangay. Mm -hmm. This is going, you know, barangay to global, <laughs> exactly, to the next correct. barangay to global. Uh, and, you know, as I said, I travel half the year. Uh, we do almost half a million, uh, half a million homes. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing, I don't really need to be there, but it's expanding rapidly. But more than that is the fact that Filipinos should take their place as one of the greatest boxers in the world, the greatest singers, but also great 
great humanitarian movements. I think that's the missing part. Mm -hmm. We we don't have to watch Leonardo DiCaprio, Al Gore. We shouldn't. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be the required reading and the required videos inside schools. Mm -hmm. It should show that Filipinos can equal or better mm -hmm. PowerPoints by actually showing things on the ground. That is great. But um, can we say that uh, is it, it is because the concept of social entrepreneurship is not really as popular as the other topics? And or is it because with social entrepreneurship, some do it uh, as a lip service? It's not really that kind of social entrepreneurship as you do it. So what would businesses now do? Because of course, some, when, when some corporations do tree planting to them, that's already well, contribution. You know, the, 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 the thing that is misunderstood largely, and I think this is also some kind of, uh, you know, that it will be sort of disputed, is the fact that, you know, uh, the social aspect of it is done by managers. So sometimes corporates... Uh, they, they 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 bring it in house okay, but yes. they use uh, taxpayers money to run to run it so they're not governed as much which is they can use it more for marketing mm -hmm. uh, they don't have to come up with results so mm -hmm. so so sometimes uh, by using managers that are not trained in the social enterprise or not trained mm -hmm. to to use pro to you to go to a social enterprise every day to make sure that it's sustainable they can cash burn it Mm -hmm. So they can cash burn uh, what is basically uh, uh, Filipino taxpayers' money, which is withheld by the company to do good. Uh, we believe that the you know uh, that cash burn is mm -hmm. actually not not as productive as making it into something that uses people, the economy, and also innovation uh, to scale. Start out with the tindahan, but at the same time, next thing you know, we're, we're you know as I said in twenty countries around the world. Mm -hmm. That is using profits to expand and do good and get more people involved. Uh, cash burn system is, okay, hey, you know, we need to do a CSR on tree planting. Oh, how many did we do last time? Uh, 100? I think we will do 200, 300. What's the sustainable of that? Is, it, is anybody, is anybody uh, taking care of the trees? Uh, so you'll find out that a lot of the tree planting, that, you know, 90% of it is dead because nobody really maintains it. Mm -hmm. So their work is to do something once a year mm -hmm. for a limited time and to spend as much money making it big and marketing it rather than realizing that uh, development, education is a sustained, you know, sustained uh, effort mm -hmm. and, of course, sustained income. And so that's why... Uh, sustain social entrepreneurship has changed into something that you you take care of it to grow as you watch your you watch your market grow you watch mm -hmm. the competence of your employees rather than a three day okay let's make a big bang and let's <laughs> yes. spend millions yes but then it. so it's like one time big time and one the time. impact is not so great but the thing there's they're using taxpayers money that's okay. withheld by okay. the company so I think hopefully that that needs to change. Okay. We'll be showing another video and uh, you will comment later on on that because this shows you as the only Filipino organization to have won this prestigious award which is the Zayed, did I pronounce it? Yes, right? Zayed. Zayed Future Energy Prize. Let's watch this video. There's one that's not obeying. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anytime. Tabi mo pag naka World record. Yeah. So okay. that's the largest sustainable uh, sustainable lesson in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we were challenged because I said, you know, I could teach any child or any woman in in, in the village 
Uh, if you give us enough, you know, if you give us 30 minutes time, I can teach how to convert a kerosene lamp, like a simple study lamp. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, we also teach mobile charging systems, mm -hmm. uh, street lights, and then now we're going to the local area network. Anyway, the the, the, the challenge by, you know, in, in Abu Dhabi was, okay, if I give you, uh, you know, uh, I think 270 children, how many could you, how many lights can you make? I said in my head, if 30 minutes, a whole day, sir, I... I could break the world record, and the world record exists in and, Mars. And, and I think this is uh, this is two thousand seven hundred uh, lamps built okay. built in a day. Uh, and then we we had uh, we had about uh, three hundred plus children. And so anyway, that, that's the that's the that's the face of the of the founder of the UAE. It's mm -hmm. a hundred his hundredth year mm -hmm. anniversary. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, we would like to break the world record again. Uh, but this just so shows you the capacity of having this, what is called, mm -hmm. you know, this blue ocean. That's as long as you believe that you can, you know, use technologies developed here to make changes in Filipinos' lives, but also to be able to change as many people around the world. But really, I want, hopefully, also them to, you know, I was very inspired by Muhammad Yunus when, you know, when he was able to use a, a social business to be able to give access to finance, mm -hmm. you know, using five women to be able to pay back a, a loan, it's the same way that you use five women in the in, in the refugee camps or in, uh, in 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 poor communities to be able to secure us giving them the material so that they can big, build lights and at the same time they pay us cash. Uh, but when you say Bangladesh, you sometimes you know say, oh, Muhammad Yunus. You know the great humanitarian, and so I, I was hopefully that one day, you know, when when kids go up to their their yayas or or oh, malasakit. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they understand mm -hmm. that Filipino word, malasakit. that's why you care for me. That's why you left. That's why you left the Philippines so that you could, you know, go and and bring malasakit. You're not just a, you know, you're not just a tool to cook to. You uh, that is that is why you know that's why that's why you care and so really one of the things about Liter of Light is not really about the bottle and the water and mm -hmm. you know this global movement, but it's just the fact that one day hopefully we can transfer the idea of why we do it is because Filipinos have this kind of malasakit. Before we end, Ila, again I'd like you to talk about uh, the uh, Expo 2020. Uh, to a lot of countries, that's a big deal, and you are the country representative. How were you chosen, and what is it that you will showcase at the Expo 2020? So we're doing an uh, Expo Live, okay. uh, and this Expo Live is basically uh, for $100,000, you have to come up with a project. And so what we're showing and, and that we're moving is uh, that's just part of the price. Uh, there's another $250,000 grant. We want to build the greenest house in the country. So we want to use like uh, technologies that are available to us. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you walk on the floors, pavement generators, bubble generator mm -hmm. pumps. We want to have a house which green technologies are not just in businesses or in private homes, but mm -hmm. something that's accessible to the public. We also have a 36 square meter uh, slot uh, in inside the expo itself. But more than that, we're really trying to hone in uh, on two things. We want to tell a great story. Mm -hmm. So we want to show how Philippines has, has gone from here, from the darkness of Marawi and, and <coughs> sorry, well, and Tacloban, mm -hmm. and how it's expanded around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also want to come up with a book. And that way, when we're there, when we have all of these countries competing against us, we have uh, one thing to share, which is a great story about how Filipinos are also global humanitarians. Wow, that's exciting. But again, uh, what is your message to number one uh, millennials who have this specific characteristics and they may not necessarily know about social entrepreneurship? The other message would be, how would now CEOs try to shift their strategy to graduate from philanthropy or corporate social responsibility to the bigger area of sustainability and social entrepreneurship. You address maybe the younger ones first. I, I think, you know, uh, uh, changing the world is not just a matter of likes, mm -hmm. but really, is, is, as I said, you know, we, we, 
change takes a long time. You really need to go out there and you really need to have a sustained way of, 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 of helping out. Mm -hmm. uh, on our side of the NGO world, uh, if you don't uh, catch a young person to be socially involved uh, by the age of 21, and the younger a little bit the better, but uh, later on, uh, they do not go back into society to mm -hmm. be able to have a life of, you know, balanced service, being successful but also giving back. Mm -hmm. So if you don't train your kid uh, to be able to do social work, to be sensitive mm -hmm. uh, to to other people's, you know, uh, to you know, uh, as I said, uh, they are they are very capable, but then they just sometimes don't have the resources to be able mm -hmm. to be f as fulfilled. If you don't if you don't make them sensitive to that, mm -hmm. then they'll learn how to block it out and, and you know put the phone on their face. Uh, clicks are not going to make it. So we need more parents to be more involved. But mm -hmm. this is also for employees. Mm -hmm. If you train them to do a once in a life, you know, once a year kind of big bang with, mm -hmm. and and don't and don't think about poverty as something that you have, uh, you know, a sustained kind of impact. But also something that you know they can get their hands on. They're mm -hmm. you know they're very also very uh, you know uh, they see what kind of a sustainable impact is. Uh, that one will also not only take away you know our taxes and use it for you know a big you know a big uh, concert and marketing. Yeah. But, okay. but really we need to get them more uh, involved, especially if they're using uh, taxpayers' money. Thank you very much, Ilak. And uh, that's open for business. That was a very uh, exciting discussion. I hope you can back again, uh, come back again so that you can talk more about social entrepreneurship. Open, uh, open for business. We'll be back in a while. Stick with us.
open for business here on eaglenewslive.com. This is Cesar Vallejos for our uh, week, uh, for our business term for the week. Uh, the business term for the week is security. Uh, in a business term, you take a refresher of the business terms to make you updated, more informed, and ready to make uh, smarter business decisions. Investopedia defines security as a fungible, negotiable financial instrument that holds some type of monetary value. It represents an ownership position in a publicly traded corporation via stock, a creditor relationship with a government body or a corporation represented by owning that entity's bond or rights to ownership as represented by an option. That's it for this week's episode of Open for Business. We end our webisode with a CEO quote for the week. This week's quote is from Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon.com. What we need to do is always lean into the future when the world changes around you and when it changes against you, what used to be a tailwind is now a headwind. You have to lean into that and figure out what to do because complaining isn't a strategy. Join us again next Saturday, 5 p.m. Philippine time for another episode of Open for Business where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business. You're on eaglenewslive.com. This is Cesar Vallejos. Have a great day.